Welcome everyone, this is Zahn with Repro Products. Today's video is on Bluebeam Review 2018 and how to create different types of markups. Here I am in Bluebeam Review 2018. If you take a look up here under the tools, there are markups. And in the markups panel, you can see different types of markups such as text box, typewriter, note, callout, and so on. You can find those tools as well up here in the middle of my screen. Now if you right click over in the gray area where all the toolbars reside, you'll get a contextual menu that lists other toolbars that are available. If you don't want to see a toolbar, just uncheck something, for example, shapes. And if you want to bring it back or any other toolbar, just click the one that you want and make sure there's a check mark in it and it will show back up. Let's take a look at how to create some of the markups. The first one we have is the text box command. Starting this command, you'll notice that once the command is started, you'll have a contextual properties toolbar that's up here. And in this contextual properties toolbar, you can make adjustments to the color of the line. You can make adjustments to the opacity of the line and the intensity of the line. You can change the different line styles. You can specify how thick the lines are. You can also specify if there is a fill color as well, and even a shape for the text box. So let's zoom into an area and put in some text. I can left click and hold and drag and then let go. And then my cursor is inside the box and I can start creating some text. And when I'm finished, I click my little select arrow button here and the command is finished and if I need to I can right click and choose auto size text box to shrink the size of the text. You'll also notice that since I have the markup selected on the right hand side is my properties palette. The properties palette shows more data than the contextual properties panel up here. So the contextual properties toolbar that's up here basically gives you most of the common aspects that you might want to change for that particular markup. Whereas over here in the properties panel, it lists additional features that you don't see. So for example, since I have it selected, I can change the color again. I can zoom in a little bit so you can see easier. <clears throat> and then again, going in here, changing the text color to something else. See? And then if you want to fill, you can have a fill color, whatever you need. Let's do a bright fill color. And even you can specify opacity as well and go from there. So let's take a look at some of the other markups that they give you. This one is the highlighter. Starting the command, you can just, again, go over to the properties palette or go over to the contextual properties toolbar and specify the color that you want for the highlighter and then left click and hold and drag your mouse and it gets created. You can also just left click and hold over text and it will highlight the text. Okay, And when it comes to highlighting the text though, you need to be a little careful because of how it reads the line work for the text and it may jump to another section. So let's zoom in a little bit and do that highlighter again and highlight that piece of text. Okay, and then the next command that they give you for markups is the pen command. So start the command, go to the properties, make the adjustments to any property data you need there or in the properties panel. And again, left click and hold and drag and draw like you're working with a pen. Uh, if you hold the shift key down and you left click and hold your mouse left button down, and drag, it'll allow you to draw a perfect horizontal line uh, or vertical line depending on um, which direction you're going. So left click and hold, hold the shift key, move your mouse to the right or left, same thing again for up or down. Okay, And then you have other additional markups like a cloud markup. So I'll start that command. You'll see the properties panel and the properties contextual toolbar changes again. 
And this one has a lot of different properties. So you might want to look at the Cloud Plus Properties panel um, and then change the data that you need in here. And then zoom into an area that you need to work in. And left click and hold and drag and make the particular call out plus properties. Now this one has a little uh, leader and a shoulder and a piece of uh, text box for you to click and then type in whatever you need area to be revised. Okay, and again, when you finish, click the arrowhead key. Other additional types of markups are the cloud markups. So rule of thumb is always start the command, go to the properties panel, make the changes that you need before you actually draw your content, and then draw your content. Okay, and if you need to adjust it after the fact, just make sure you have the object selected first. And once the object is selected, you can go to the properties and make adjustments. There are additional markups here. For example, say call out. You can start the command and head over to an area you want to work in. Left click and hold and drag. And where you click is where the arrowhead point is going to be. Um, and then put in your data. Click the little select arrow down here to finish the command. And then choose the next markup. So here's stamps. So starting that command, you'll get different types of stamps that come shipped with the software. You can make your own if you need to as well. So I'll just pick something, say, for preliminary. And then zoom into an area that I want to work in. And then left click and hold and drag. And the larger you drag, larger box that you create, the bigger the preliminary shape um, stamp is going to be. And again, you can adjust it after the fact. You can insert an image. So when you click this command, it'll open up the dialog box to ask you to go get some images. So we'll pick an image, say this one. Hit open. And then you left click and drag to place this, the image and the size of the image as well. And then lastly, snapshot allows you to capture an area to temporary memory so that you can paste it somewhere else. An example would be Let's zoom into, say, this these double doors. I'll use this command, snapshot. I'll do a window crossing in the area that I want to work with. It captures it to temporary memory. And then from there, I can go to File, New from Template, say, for example, Punch. It'll create a new punch document. And I can right-click and paste that snapshot if, I w if you uh, saw me do that earlier. And you can obviously resize it. Okay, so those are all the different types of markups that are available in the software. There are tons of other ones as well. This is just a quick intro video on the different markups. So when you get a chance, explore the software, explore all the different markups, and don't forget, uh, make sure you start the command and look at all the property data and set it up the way you want before you draw it. Because if you don't do that and you just draw it, it remembers all the settings from the last time you used the tool, and it'll show up not the way you really intended it to be at that moment. Okay? Thank you very much for watching.